Good morning, everybody. Uh, I know I promised you guys a while back that when the Five Bloods came out, I was going to do a review on it. Uh, I hadn't watched it until Tuesday because there's a friend of mine. We see a lot of movies together, and I waited for him for his day off. So we watched it on Tuesday. I have to tell you, this movie, this movie would mop the floor with Martin Scorsese's uh, The Irishman. Uh, everybody, The Irishman was on the news every day. All the time, waiting. Everyone was waiting to see this movie, and it turns out it was pretty much just a piece of garbage. Anyway, this movie uh, had some innovation in it that I freaking loved. Just in case you guys don't know what this film is, it takes place current day, and it's about it's about four guys who go back to Vietnam. Four Vietnam vets, black men, who go back to Vietnam in current day to dig up their squadron leaders and their hero to, to dig up his remains and also a briefcase full of millions of dollars worth of gold bullion and they were going to split it. Uh, one interesting thing is that Chadwick Boseman now is currently one of the top leading men out there. Uh, he took a back seat to this. The leads were four 70-year-old men. One guy I didn't know too well, he's an, uh, one of those Tony winning uh, Broadway guys, I forget his name. And then you have Delroy Lindo, who has always been one of my favorites. Love him. Love him in that film. But anyway, uh, he's one of the leads. Isaiah Whitlock, who you would know from The Wire as the state senator, the corrupt state senator that always went, she. He's in it. He's amazing. And yes, he does say that in this. And then Clark Peters, who is also from The Wire. He's kind of the wise old man that was always sitting in the corner with his reading glasses, working on the, the miniature dolls and stuff like that. Anyway, these guys were amazing. They are the leads. Chadwick Boseman is in the flashbacks. He's the squadron leader who ends up uh, dying while they're there in Vietnam. One of the cool things, and I got to say, probably the most innovative thing that I saw in this film, that I, I was really refreshed. Uh, whenever they had a flashback, and there were plenty of them, they're in helicopters, they're in combat, all this stuff, right? Instead of finding young actors to play these guys, or as Scorsese would do, is just friggin', you know, paint special effects all over these guys to make them look like old men without wrinkles, which is what he did in The Irishman. Um, in here, he took these 70-year-old men and just put them in combat. So they're there. You know that they're 19 years old or whatever in these scenes, but uh, you see the actual actors, Delroy Lindo and Clark Peters, and they're playing 20-year-old men running around in combat, tired, jumping out of helicopters. Uh, and Delroy Lindo, he's always been one of my all-time favorite actors. I've loved him, like I said, since, since the early 90s. Uh, he nails it in this. He is going to be, there's one monologue in there, which I think it might as well be called, You Will Not Kill Paul. They ate me in that lymphoma, Agent Orange herbicidal stew. Those army bastards, they scorched the earth with it, sprayed that shit in the air and the water. My bloodstream, my cells, my DNA, and my motherfucking soul. But I ain't dying from that shit. You will not kill Paul. That monologue alone is going to be the one that is going to be played over and over and over this year during Oscar uh, Oscar contention time. Um, anyway, I highly recommend it. It's told from an African-American perspective how even 50 years later, these guys were like, I mean, look, even white people were just like, what the hell? We're looking back on this war. And, you know, it didn't mean anything to anybody. And we wasted a lot of lives. And now you have African-American men that were fighting for Basically, people that called them the N-word. And it's a very, very interesting story. Anyway, highly recommend it. It's on Netflix. Watch it. Um, if you're a Spike Lee fan, you'll see a lot of tags and a lot of references. I do recommend, before you see it, if you haven't seen Apocalypse Now anytime recently, go back and watch the final cut. And also, just for fun, go see the 1948 film, um, Treasure of the Sierra Madre. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to fill you in on that. It's a great film, and I'm really excited. I'm going to watch it again, and probably another time after that, because there's a lot of stuff in there that I missed. I know that.